previously recorded. All right, y'all, so now we're back with the ground beef. I don't let it drain the oil off of it. But back in that same skillet with the oil that was in it now, once I pulled the meat off of it and all the grease out the pan, you know, fat flavor now, I got rid of some of it, but not all of it. Okay. I'm adding hot water to it. And we're getting that cornstarch to add water to the pan. And now it's about to start creating a gravy. With that cornstarch sticking that water up. All right, y'all, so this is what the ground beef and gravy is looking like. That right there. That gravy is sticking enough on now, you know. Hey y'all, it's your girl Tiana. I'm going to be me and today I'm coming at you with a recipe. Today what we're going to be making is some braised pork ribs with maybe some mashed potatoes. So I'm going to be showing you how to make the braised pork ribs. Um, I want to thank you for coming. Welcome to my channel if you is new. Uh, also, only ask you to do is ring the doorbell. What I mean by rain is over, I hit the thumbs up the like button. If you want to know how to make some braised short ribs, pork short, pork ribs, not short ribs, braised pork ribs, then stick here and um, don't forget to rain the doorbell. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up the like button. Um, that's rain the doorbell. Don't forget to do all the stuff that you need to do so you'll be notified whenever I come live or upload a video. Okay. All right. Let's get into this video. And thank you for coming once again. Alrighty, so the ingredients that you're going to need is some flour, you're going to need you some tomato paste, seasoning salt of your choice, some thyme, some beef broth or beef bouillon cubes, you're going to need you some garlic powder, some celery or celery salt, right, celery, like regular fresh celery, you're going to need you some onion powder, some black pepper, and then you're going to need, um, now, uh, you can add you some celery, onion, bell pepper, and tomato, okay? But I only have some bell pepper, onion, and tomato, no celery. That's why I got the celery salt. And then you also can have some carrots. I don't have none of that, and I didn't want to go to the store to get it, so that's, that's what you're going to need. You're also going to need your pork ribs. You could do this with beef, short ribs, or pork, but I'm going to be doing it with my pork ribs, and I just cut them up, washed them, cleaned them in vinegar solution, and all that good stuff and so yeah so now it's time to get to cooking them and that's how i did them i just cut them up just like that all right so then you're going to need you a dutch oven or a roaster all right you're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees but i have me a roaster and i'm hoping i can use this on top of the stove but i'm about to find out today all right, y'all, so first thing first, I'm about to start seasoning up my ribs. So season to your own taste, but I'm adding my black pepper, garlic powder, seasoning salt, I'm adding my thyme, just a little bit. And you could do this with beef ribs if you want to, which will give it a, probably a better flavor. I never did it with beef ribs, but I'm quite sure it can't be no different from roast. Remember I told y'all, a lot of things, is, it's pretty much, that's onion powder. It's pretty much cooked the same, you know, just different cuts of the meat. All right, then I'm going to add my celery salt. Okay, so now I'm going to get all this here mixed in, and then you can add some with just the, the W sauce, I don't have any of that. So you will add some of that to it as well. All right, so now I got that. I'm going to be adding just a little bit of my flour to these ribs. And we're going to mix that around. All 
Just enough to get it all over them. You're not trying to flour them like you're trying to fry them or anything like that. Just enough to get them coated. All right, so that's what we got. All right, y'all, so here on the stove, I got my roaster. And I'm gonna do this all one pan because all the flavors that I'm gonna be building up in this pan, I want this in my dish. So I'm gonna take some oil and I'm gonna get it down in my pan. I hope I can cook in this on the stove, y'all. Try it out. Okay. This gonna be going in the oven, so I just wanna brown up my uh, ribs and stuff. So now I'm gonna take my ribs and I'm gonna get them down in here. We're gonna start browning them up, getting some color on them. And you don't want a lot of oil, you just want a little bit, just enough to have them brown in something. You need something to brown them. You can use olive oil, whatever kind of oil that you want to use is up to you. Do what you want to do. Okay, so now once I get those brown, I'm going to move on to the next step. All right, so, so now I got these two browned up. I'm going to get them out. Get them to the side for a second. You're not trying to cook them all the way through. You're just getting some color on them. Get some 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 goodness down in the bottom of your pan. Make sure you don't do this on too high because you don't want to burn that in the bottom of the pan because you're gonna need that for the flavor and stuff. So I'm gonna get those out of there. Get them and now we're about to go in with Onions, bell peppers, if you got celery, kale, carrots, all that, put that at the same time. And now we're about to work this too and deglaze this pan. And we're about to add the tomato paste to this. The whole can this is a six ounce can now that bowl we have we season our medium we're gonna rinse that out add some water to it and keep it to the side it's probably got about two cups of water in it at the moment but we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna start so I'm taking these bell peppers and onions, and if you got celery, all that there together. Like that right there. And once we add that water to the pan, it's going to deglaze the pan. So you're going to add some flour. Excuse the um pan, but you're going to add about three, two tablespoons of flour maybe. And it's not creating a gravy, it's going to be like a sauce to help thicken it as it bakes. Because we're going to finish this here off in the oven and let it do it too. So we're going to cook this here and just cook that flour up a little, just a little bit. Just cook it for, for a little bit. Cook that flour taste out. about good two three minutes all right so now we're about to add the liquid to the pan and that's going to deglaze the bottom of that pan and get all that everything off of it off the bottom sorry about the fan but i can't turn it off it automatically turns on and turn off by itself So now we're just going to give this a good mix around. I'm going to add a little bit more seasonings to this. 
and this is where I'm going to add some more liquid because I'm going to cover the, the meat all the way. So, all right, so here I'm going to add my two beef bouillon cubes. You can add chicken if you want to, it's up to you. I'm just using the beef. And then I'm going to season this here up with a little bit more seasoning because the meat got seasoning, but the sauce needs a little seasoning too. So I'm adding a little bit more of the same seasonings that I use to season the meat. So that was my onion powder, a little celery salt, a little garlic powder, a little seasoning salt. And black pepper. And we're gonna put this in the oven and let it cook for maybe like good maybe hour and a half. Yeah, probably like an hour and a half. So I'm gonna mix that up real good. You wanna scrape down the sides, get everything off the sides and all that good stuff down into the pan. And now you're gonna take your meat and add it back in, juices and all. Just like that. And that does gonna cook in the oven and finish cooking all the way through getting tender. I'm gonna add a tad bit more seasoning because I feel like it could use just a little bit and I'm gonna add a little salt to mine. Cause sometimes I be seasoning, 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 seasoning until I just throw a little salt in there and that's what burns all the flavor. So I'm going to throw a little bit of salt. And I'm going to get some more liquid off up in here because it's starting to thicken up. And I don't want it to be too thick while it's cooking in the oven. So if you may be wondering what kind of um flour. I use all-purpose flour. You want just enough liquid to cover these up. Make sure it's seasoned to taste. Don't over season because don't forget you you added the um beef bouillon cubes to it so you know that can make it a little salty if you not careful. Alright, so I'm gonna put the lid on this and it's going in the oven for about an hour and a half, two hours. I think I'm gonna just let it go for about two hours. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes with this, and that's it. Or some rice, but I know my husband gonna want some potatoes, so we're gonna do some potatoes. So yeah, push everything down in that liquid, and we just gonna let that go. y'all so here go the ribs they done and tender and so i'm gonna make some mashed potatoes to go with this but stay tuned for the pictures in the end y'all i hope y'all enjoy this recipe if you try it and you like it leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about it but until the next video y'all know i am out and i want it tender but I don't want it falling all off the bone. You know, I want it still attached to the bone and tender at the same time. But
then you go and bite. That look like a bite of fat. <laughs> Yes, this would be good on rice or mashed potatoes, either way you want it. But y'all, look at it. Mmm. Child, stay tuned for pictures. Alright, y'all, this is the finished look of the braised ribs and mashed potatoes and corn. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the blessings. Good morning, guys.